you, Father. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, Father. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you. Oh, You're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word, Father. Thank you for your anointing. Yes, Thank you for Lord. your power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your love. We give you all praise and glory, Jesus. Father. You're an almighty God. We love you, Lord. I thank Lord you, Lord, Jesus. that you give us peace and rest, Lord. Yes. That you help us to have sweet sleep at night. Yes, Lord. And I give you all praise. I thank you, Lord, that you take all of our burdens and carry them, Lord. I thank you, Lord, you empower us to do what we couldn't normally do by ourselves. And I give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. You are worthy, thank Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray you anoint this word tonight, Father. Just help me to flow with the Holy Ghost, Father. I love you, Lord. Open the eyes of our understanding, Father. Yes. Give us eyes to see, Thank you. ears to hear, and hearts to understand. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't get this cover over. Glory to God. God is good, isn't he? He's awesome. He's a mighty God. He is a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Some of you all were here Sunday morning, weren't you? Yeah. We're kind of going to spin off of that somewhat Sunday mornings. Because I didn't get to go get to a lot of what I was going to preach Sunday morning. But we're going to hit some other stuff too, also. <laughs> so I've got about five pages of notes here, but we're going to get to a lot of Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? <laughs> you know, yeah, I used to have just like a little post it note, and I could preach an hour on a little post it note. So when I say, when she sees all these pages of notes, she goes, oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> we just get from what we get for. All right. You always get to what we get to. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I've got, I get I get churches and ministers all over the world inviting me to come and preach at their church, and most most of them are places I really don't want to go. But most of them are places that I would have to pay my own way to go there and preach. But but we always got an offer from a church in Pakistan. They said they're a big-sized church. They have several hundred people who go to their church. And they said they could pay for my transportation, all my expenses there. So uh, I said, oh, I'll pray about it. You know, I'm not going to take off over there without praying about it. I get invitations to churches like all over Africa. I got, got an invitation since that, that last invitation. A few days ago, I got another invitation from a place in from an African island that's like a paradise island. And you can go look at pictures of that and all that. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I told him I'll pray about it. And I, so I do, I pray about it. And when I got this from Pakistan, my wife sent me a bunch of stuff on what's going on in Pakistan. <laughs> because it's like 90, it's like 93% Muslim over there. Oh, wow. And, and only 7% Christian. But, but it is a free country. I mean, they have in their constitution that they allow free religion. But they really don't. Because their police, they come after the Christians and stuff. And so, so it's dangerous. But you know, God will protect you if he sends yes, you so. Yes, That's right. Yes. God told the Apostle Paul, when, now the reason I know this is because he told this to King Agrippa when he was talking to him about what Jesus told him. He said, the Lord told me he was going to send me to the Jews and the Gentiles. And he told me wherever he sends me that he will protect me. So he said, no harm will come to me. And then a point, a point came that he followed God like that for quite a while. And finally, there came a point where Paul said in his heart that he was going to Jerusalem no matter what. And he, it says every city that he went into the Holy Spirit bid him not to go to Jerusalem. And then he went to some people who the Bible says told him by the Spirit that he should not go to Jerusalem. Right. And then God sent a prophet to him and bound his hands up in, in Paul's belt and said, whoever goes to Jerusalem that's wearing this belt, they will be put in bonds. Mm -hmm. But Paul said, I choose, I choose to, to go to Jerusalem if I didn't have to be put in bonds or die. And he, and he was put in bonds in, in Jerusalem. King Agrippa put him in bonds for two years, hoping he would give him a bride. 
and finally he went to he went to Rome and he, he had some freedom to be able to minister and stuff. But the thing is, and God was with him the whole way. Yes. You see, the thing is, if we mess up, God still is with us. That's right. He still has a new plan. Every misstep you take, God's got a plan from that place. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when he got thrown in prison in Jerusalem, God spoke to him and he said, you're going to go to Rome. Now I'm going to use you in Rome. And so he appealed to Caesar when they, when they were coming against him. And after, after a couple of years, they sent him to Rome. And we have the different stories of, of the islands when he, when he was on his way there, when he was on a prison ship going there. But, but if God leads you and guides you and directs you to do a thing, then God will be with you in doing that thing. Amen. God will strengthen you. God will enable you. God will give you all the resources you need. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you. Thank you, Lord. So, so pray for your pastor that God will give me wisdom. You know, I, I do hear from the Lord. So uh, the Lord speaks to me a, a lot. A lot of mornings I wake up and the word of the Lord is coming to me when I wake up. And I get up a lot of times I've written an article and put it online. I, more than one day a week I'm putting articles online uh, for people to get ministered to. And this stuff the Lord's given me. And so like one day last week, and I've been, I've been studying certain things and one day last week the Lord spoke to me and he said well, I woke up and the word of the Lord came to me and the Lord told me to go look up where your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto me look that scripture up he said and look at the word and and so I did that the Lord told me, if you'll do that, he, will say, he said, you will see that spirit, soul, and body are all one. They're not three separate things. And so when I looked at that word, and I found out there's several words, the Greek words that are translated and, and most, most of them mean the same thing our word and means. It means and also. In other words, then this other, also this other thing. But that and, when I looked that word up, it's a word that actually, it's a word K-I, K-A-I. It's a word that actually links together into one. The thing right before it and the thing after. Sometimes some like those, those three, it links together, Father, it links together spirit, soul, and body into one. In other words, we are one person. We are a spirit, a soul, and a body. We are made after the image and likeness of God. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So, when we get the Spirit of Christ in us, not only do we receive the Spirit of Christ, but we receive the Father and the Holy Spirit. As far as, as, far as the Holy Spirit's in us through Christ to be able to lead us, guide us, direct us, teach us. But we don't have the dunamis miraculous power until we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is a separate thing Amen. than receiving Christ. But when we receive Christ, he still, he still, in Him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when we are in Him and He is in us, then we have the fullness of the Godhead bodily in us. Jesus said, I'll reconcile you to the Father. See, Jesus came to reconcile us, and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that we might be reconciled to God. We're only reconciled to God through Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I kind of hit some of this Sunday morning. But now it's Wednesday night, and there's some people here that wouldn't hear Sunday morning. And a lot of people don't hear everything the first time. That's right. Right. Sometimes I gotta preach something for years for you to find again. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That's, That's true, right? right? It's well. That's true. That's true, right? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Well, tonight I'm gonna turn to a different portion of scripture. Actually, I'm gonna turn to the same portion of scripture. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. We're gonna look at that in deep more detail. Because I didn't really go to that scripture. Uh, Sunday morning, I quoted. Thank you, Lord. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses twenty-two through 
24. And this is important too. Verse 22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. We're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Why? Because God wants us to be holy. God wants to be a spirit, soul, and body. We're to abstain from all. If something even appears to be evil, we should stay away from it. Don't put your hand to anything that could cause you to stumble. Jesus said, even if your eye offend you or your hand offend you, that means entice you to sin. That word offend there means entice to sin. If those things offend or entice you to sin, cut them off. Even if it's your hand or your eye. Now, he was physically talking about our hand or our eye, but he was using that as an example. No matter how dear something is to you, yes. if it's going to entice you to sin, you better cut it off your life. Amen. Because, because he goes on to say, because it's better to go into the kingdom of God, go to heaven, maybe, than to go to hell whole. And he uses That's right. hell words. Jesus. Amen. That's right. Hell. Hell is real. Yes. Heaven is good. Amen. Heaven is real. Amen. Hell is bad. Hell is real. Yeah. I want to go to heaven and not hell. Right. Absolutely. Right. He's coming for a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle. Now, it's really not God's will for us to get into sin. But we do have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. And he is the propitiation of our sin. He will deliver us from sin. He will strengthen us. Yes. He will forgive us. Yes. Thank God. Amen. That is God's grace. That if we do get into sin, all we have to do is confess with a confession of repentance. We turn away from that thing. Amen. We say, God, I'm turning away from that. Help me, Lord, not ever do it again. You know what? He wipes it out like that. Amen. One day he was talking to Peter. And Peter said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother that's done me wrong? Seven times? I mean, that seems like a lot, right? This guy's done me wrong one time. You know, there's a saying that goes, get me once, shame on you. But get me twice, shame on me. In other words, we better be careful. If somebody's done us wrong before, Jesus said, no, you just keep forgiving them over and over. He said, I don't say seven times. He said, I say 70 times seven. That's a lot. Amen. That's a lot. That's a lot. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're to forgive people like God forgives us. God forgives us over and over and over and over again. But really God, the first ch verse of chapter 2 of first, first John says, But I write this unto you that you sin not. But we do, if we do sin, if we do choose to sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus came to deliver us. The Lord, is, he speaks Bible words too. He tells me to lurk up certain words. <coughs> One time the Lord spoke to me. He said, the word say means deliver. Saved means deliver. He said, salvation means deliverance. And the Savior is the deliverer. That's what he told me. So I looked it up and I found out he was right on all that, thing, all that stuff. God is always right. I mean, we, but we have to check everything out with the Word of God. And, the, the, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek. So that's why it's good to have some good study. It helps me be able to look stuff up. I encourage you to get these sword. They're free on PCs. You, you can download, you can get like my sword on your Android devices. If you get an e-sword on like an I, iPad or, or an iPhone on one of those, you have to pay $4.99 for it one time. And that's for all your devices. So, but it's worth it. I mean, I think I paid $100 for this Bible when I bought it. Now it's falling apart. But I, I think I paid 100 bucks for that. But I can get a, a program that has dozens and dozens of different translations of the Bible. And all your commentaries, Esau has all your commentaries. I use commentaries for like weights and measurements and things like that. 
I don't use it for doctrine. I just go to the Greek. And it has King James with the literal Greek translations. And that makes it a lot easier to study the Word. And it will help you to study the Word. So pray without ceasing. I got through one verse. Pray without, oh, I, that wasn't what it was. Abstain from all appearance of evil, right? Mm -hmm. well, pray without ceasing is higher up. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you. The word sanctify really literally means to make you holy. It literally means to make you holy. To make you holy, sanctify you, holy completely. That holy there means completely. And I pray God, and I pray God is not in the Greek. If you have a, if you have a, uh, a Bible that has like it in italics, that means that is not in the Greek. So I pray God's not in the Greek. But your whole, say whole. 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 But your whole spirit and soul and body. That word and on those is this Greek word kai, K-A-I, chaos. And soul, and in other words, that is linked together. Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so the, we are one person. I had, I had a minister come up to me one day. He said, Brother Mike, Pastor Mike, he put his arm on my shoulder. He's a little bit older than I am. He thought he was a lot older than me, but he was just a little bit older than I am. He thought I was a lot younger than I am. He said, Pastor Mike, he said, when we sin, when our body sins, it's not us. He said, because we are a spirit, and our spirit stays holy when we sin, when our body sins. You know what the Bible says? I mean, the Bible calls, calls people living souls. There's over 50 times in the Old Testament where groups of people are called souls. There's 19 times in the New Testament where groups of people are called souls. Well, single people are called souls. It says, in, it says in Ezekiel, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You see, our soul part of us is, is really us, our personality, everything. You know, Gail is totally different than I am. <laughs> She's got a totally different personality than I do. And every single, Tom's got a totally personality different than Gail does. Everybody is totally, you have two kids. Even if they're twins, they come out totally different. Because they're two different people. My cousin and I, we dated at, at a camp deal when we were kids. We took we had these two twin girls who were there, identical twins. And they were totally different. They were totally different. But mine was nicer than, her, than his was. So he wanted to trade me. He thought, we can just trade. <laughs> they look the same, right? <laughs> we could trade. But no, I mean, everybody's different. So your soul part of you is really who you are. And your soul part of you decides because it's your mind and your will and your emotions. That is where you decide how you will walk and what you will do. You can walk after the flesh, or you can walk after the spirit. Or you can put to death by the spirit, you can put to death the deeds of the flesh. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to crucify the flesh with the affections and lust. The Bible says those that are actually Christ have done that. We, we, it's still a process in our life, but there's stuff we've got to get rid of, folks. I mean, there's stuff that God wants to perfect us even unto the image of Jesus Christ. He wants Christ to be formed in us. And he'll give us the strength to do what he calls us to do. He'll protect us when he leads us a place. Like he told Paul, he would protect him. That's why I want to make sure and find out if God really wants me to go other places. Because God's called me for here right now. And if I go, I'll probably just be gone a week or two. But... It's still, God's good, you know? And I'm not planning on doing that. And moreover, the very God of peace sanctified means, means to make you holy. Holy means completely. 
And is one of those and words. And links together. Your whole, your whole means complete in every part. Spirit and soul and body. Be preserved, guarded, blameless without, blameless without blemish. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And faithful is he that called you who also will do it. Faithful is he that called you who also will do it. Faithful is he. In other words, God called you to live like this. And so he will do it in you when you submit to God. He will perform that in your body, in your life, your spirit, soul, and body. He will perform it. He will purify you. He will make you holy as you submit to him. He will destroy the power of sin in your life as you submit to God and resist the devil. He will flee from you. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Now he comes back. The Bible says Jesus resisted the devil, I think, several times. I think it mentions three times. The Bible says, then the devil left him for a season. That means he came back. He don't leave forever. Oh, I got rid of the devil. He'll never be back. No, he's going to be back. We've got to keep fighting the good fight of faith. We have an adversary of the devil. We've got to fight in this life. Come on. But Jesus is with us. Amen. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. No weapon, against, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Victory, victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Turn me to Philippians chapter 1. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing. You know, God wants us to be confident. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day Jesus comes back. He that begun a good work in you will perform it. What does that mean? It means God's going to fight our battles for us. It means God's going to perform everything He said He would in our life as we submit ourselves to Him. As we humble ourselves before the Lord, He'll lift us up. We need to be meek and lowly if we ever want to be used to God. Amen. We've got to learn to be a servant. We want to be used to God. Yes. Jesus taught his disciples that. He said, I want to wash your guys' feet. And Peter didn't want him to wash his feet. And then Jesus, he told him, well, you can't be used to me. He said, well, then wash my whole body. He was trying to teach him to be humble, to be submitted, to be willing to do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes to do to be of service to God. That's what we need to do. We need to be willing. I used to tell God, I say, well, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go, except for this place and except for that place. I really don't want to go to Africa, I said. I really don't want to go to Texas or Kansas. I said those three, Africa, Texas, or Kansas. <laughs> I've had more offers to go preach in Texas in Africa than I have anywhere else. It's pretty amazing. So, so God's opening, like, uh, at least making me think about, you know, what I'm doing. Because I told, but then I told him, look, finally I got to the place where instead of saying, well, I won't go here, I won't go there, I finally just said, Lord, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I sang a song to him. I said, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Or a mountain, or plains, or seas. I'll say what you want me to say. Dear Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. Hallelujah. And I said, and I just cried out to the Lord. I said, Jesus, use me. Jesus, use me. And, oh, Lord, don't refuse me. For surely there's a work 
that I can do. And even though it's humble, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. Hallelujah. So we do that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Steve and me went out yesterday. We was out on the streets in Kansas City in a rough, rough area of town. We were praying for those people. And some of them would just soon probably cut your throat, you know, and take your money. But uh, we just will up and on them. You show them the love of God. We give them crosses, and then we'd ask if, we, if they like prayer. And they, a lot of, I mean, we pray for all kinds of people about all kinds of things. I prayed for a lady that had uh, pancreatic cancer. I prayed for people that want to be delivered from drugs and alcohol. We prayed for them to be delivered, to be saved, to be born again, set free. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A lot of people, until I got wore out, until I got wore down. You know, it, it got hot yesterday. Yeah. It, almost, it was almost 100 yesterday. But uh, it was up there in Kansas City in the end. I mean, it, it, at first it was okay, but then it got kind of hot. And uh, anyhow, you just go, you go, and God will give you the strength to go. Whatever he leads you to do, he'll use you in a mighty way. Just submit yourself to God. James says, submit yourself, to God, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In other words, you've got to be willing to obey God. Submission means to obey. When Kathy and I first got married, she said, I want to put in there that I'll obey you. You remember that? She, she said, since then, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> <laughs> but not, she hadn't said that many times, but I think once or twice she said that, didn't she? Anyhow, God's good. Listen, this is the thing. If your husband tells you to do something different than what God tells you, always follow God. Amen. Always follow God. Always follow God. Because even if some authority in the government tells you to do something contrary to what God, God tells you, then always follow God. Peter and James, when they had... When they had ministered to the, the man at the gate beautiful and they went in and they, they were reproved by the, fit, the, by the authority back then the, the religious they were the government authorities the religious they told them you cannot preach in the name of Jesus anymore they said who do we obey oh God or you God told us to preach in the name of Jesus so they beat them they sent them out there were thousands of people that day who received Jesus Christ Hallelujah. in the temple. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Thank you, Lord. Amen. They said it's the name of Jesus and faith in that name that has made this man whole. The name of Jesus and faith in that name has made this man whole. We need to submit to God. God will use us when we submit to God and resist the devil. You have total authority and power over the devil. Come up here, Kathy. Now, she's not the devil, but I'm going to use it like she is. Oh. She's not demon-possessed, but I'm going to use it like she is. <clears throat> and I've, I've, I've been around demon-possessed people. <laughs> Kathy's been with me one time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I pretend like you're demon-possessed. Let's just pretend like you <laughs> This is how you cast the devil out of somebody. Devil, you come out of her in the name of Jesus. I believe it happens when you say it, and that's it. Hallelujah. That's Thank it. Lord. believe it happens when you say it. Glory to say you. it loud where everybody around you can hear it. Amen. Amen. believe it happens when you say it. Amen. That's what Jesus did. You know, the problem with, with people is we look at circumstances. To try to see if our if we were really in faith. I mean, if it really worked. I don't have to look at her to see if, because that demon may throw her all over the floor. After I command him to come out. Yeah, that's right. That's what happened with his disciples one time. His disciples couldn't cast a demon out. 
He said it was because of your unbelief you couldn't cast that demon out. And he said, this kind cometh not out but by much fasting and prayer. And he was talking about the unbelief cometh not out but by much fasting and prayer. What he did, he told that same demon in that same child, he said, come out, and he didn't use the name of Jesus because he was Jesus. But we can have the authority to use the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, these signs shall follow them to believe. They shall cast out devils in my name. Shall they cast out devils in the name of Jesus? Paul, he went around casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And other people saw him do that. And so they thought, well, that's a lot easier than what we've been trying. So they tried to do it the same way that Paul did. He, 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 they told this, the seven sons of Sceva who were exorcists. Sceva was one of the high priests. And like the high priests, they had their kids. They went out and exercised demons for people. They made a living doing that. They made money doing that. And they saw Paul just simply saying, come out in the name of Jesus. And the demon fled this morning. They saw that. And he went to this demon. The first one was demon possessed. They said, we command you to come out of her, of him, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And the demon spoke back out of that person, Adam. The demon says, we know Paul, and we know Jesus, but we don't know you. If you don't have authority to cast out devils, don't try it. And the Bible says that person that was demon possessed stripped them naked and beat them up. Seven sons of Sceva. That one man beat them up and stripped them naked. And they went naked and bleeding out of the house. That's that's scary, isn't it? Just make sure that you that you know who you are in Christ, and then exercise your authority. Sometimes the devil may be giving you trouble. You exercise your authority when the devil's trying to give you trouble. Right. Exercise your authority like Paul did. Yeah. Paul was having trouble with the devil. He said there was a thorn in his flesh that was given to him. It was, an, it, was a, it, was sent, it was a messenger. That's an angel. A messenger is angelos. That's where we get the word angel from. There was a messenger from Satan sent to buffet him. That means stop, beat him, and stop him. Because he was great, given great revelation. And he sought the Lord thrice, three times, to take it away from him. And then finally God said, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Now that doesn't mean God didn't say, well, you know, he couldn't get delivered from that. It's just what, he, what God was saying is everything I've already freely given you is sufficient to meet your needs. So he said, so then I would rather, instead of, instead of griping and complaining, I would rather glory, give God glory in the middle of tribulations that the dunamis, miraculous power of God might rest upon me. And we, we, we have an adversary of the devil. We've got to fight. It, the fight, it's an everyday thing, folks. The devil doesn't go on vacation. He's a spirit being. He don't have to sleep. That's true. That's true. He's trying to mess with you in your sleep. Why you're sleeping? Huh? Oh yeah. Whatever you're doing, the devil's. But listen, folks. We need to stay diligent. We need to be diligent and understand who we are in Christ. We are children of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus Christ. We we have more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, yeah. More than conquerors Amen. through Jesus Christ. Thank Praise you, Lord. Lord. Yes. Spirit, soul, and body. So like this, this guy was telling me that it's not our, it's not our spirit. You know, we are a spirit is what he said. And so your spirit's still holy even when you're doing evil things. Listen, if you do evil things, you are evil. You're walking in unrighteousness when you're doing evil things. You choose to do those things. You choose to do those things. You are a soul. You are a spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body. And there's a whole bunch. I mean, I, I thought I'd look at all those scriptures that link stuff together. There's hundreds of scriptures. Hundreds of them. 
all through the New Testament that does the link stuff together like that. It's kind of interesting reading it, reading it. If you just do like a search and, and look with the with your uh, your King James Plus, which gives the, the strongest words, it'll tell you every word that's that's that K A I. And every place it like in some places it's linking like one thing together with another, some things linking several things together. But you can see that it ties it all together. It's kind of amazing. It's kind of amazing. God's word is awesome. The deeper you get into the Word of God, the more you realize that you don't know. Hallelujah. It is really amazing. Just dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Study to show yourself approved of God. Dig into the Word. Get into the Word. Dig into the Word. Every time you get more light, every time you get more revelation, everything becomes clear all through the Bible. Everything becomes clear. Then you get more. And Jesus said, the more a person has, the more they get. He said, to those who have, I'll give more. He said, to those who have not, I'll take away even that which they have. So keep pressing forward to get more and more and more of what God has for us. Just keep pressing in to the things of God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said in Luke chapter 16, verse 16, He said, the law and the prophets are in the Old Testament. He said it was until John or John the Baptist. He said, since then, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man, every man, he man, he meant man, person. Every person presseth into it. In other words, we've got to push into the things of God. We've got to press into them. We do, do what the apostles say. But they, the apostles were just building the foundation upon the chief cornerstone of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is what holds it all together. Make sure you understand what everything Jesus said. Then start, then if you understand then what he says, then you start getting into the epistles and things what the apostles said. Hallelujah. God's good. That's my message. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I know you're just clapping because I'm done, right? <laughs> Thank you. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body.